And I think I could really vanquish a bandit with this spoon. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Uh, here's my dog. He's stuck in the corner. Woo! There he good. goes. A couple of weeks ago, someone commented on one of our videos. I'm sorry, I can't remember who. They said, thank God it's getting cold outside because PGC recipes for the cold time foods are always the best ones. And I agree, I mean, I, I like the cold time food. So it's cold time food, I'm gonna make goulash. Yeah, goulash is a great word, goulash. In America, the US of A, AKA the most important place in the world, we have a dish called goulash which has nothing to do with the dish that we're making here other than they share the same name. In America, goulash is typically ground beef and macaroni in kind of a tomato sauce. And the American version of this dish is quite delicious. We will make it on the show sometime. However, this is more goulash in the traditional Hungarian style. I want to emphasize style. I'm not an authority on Hungary, only on being hungry for this dish because it's delicious. The version we will be making is kind of more like a beef stew, but in the Hungarian way, it is seasoned with an inappropriate amount of paprika, and it must be Hungarian paprika, of course. So we'll be cooking in our Dutch oven today, and this is a great application for lard, if you have lard. I've talked about this in the past, but I think that lard in particular has a very pleasing effect on the texture, the in texture of the soup for the stew. And I don't know exactly what that is, but I I think I'd almost describe it as a silkiness, something like that. And while that lard is heated up, we'll chop some onions. Like all good things, it starts with onions. We'll be using lots of onions today. These are yellow onions. Are they organic? Are they organic? Uh, uh, are they? <laughs> John picked these up on the way over. They are organic. I can tell because they are obviously better quality. Totally. Okay, so I've uh, I've peeled the onions, and of course you can you can chop the onions to your your desire. I I'm a little bit tired. I uh, I, I, I don't even really want to talk about how I feel too terribly much, other than to say I kind of feel like I'm in the mood to put my knife through the onion and just uh, see what happens. You know, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be sweaty about these onions for sure. And I almost feel like we could get more of a rustic end product if we didn't use straight lines. I kind of think of the, the non-uniform chop as a choice. Here I am chopping weird so that we can have some interesting onions. Okay. So surely our lard is melted, so I'll go ahead and get the onions in here. Okay. So those are gonna brown for a little bit on medium heat. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, see if it needs more uh, lard or not. In the interim, we'll chop some peppers. The red ones are organic, you can tell because they're smaller. They didn't get quite as much uh, magic fertilizer juice. But they did, it was, you know, maybe a, I don't know, just maybe less of it, who can say. So this is my preferred method of trimming bell peppers. You've probably seen me do this sometimes on the show. Chop off the top, chop off the bottom. And then uh, what I'm left with, there you got the ring, the top, you got the butt, the bottom. You got the two sides, which we can trim up. I'm gonna do that with the other peps. All right. And these we want uh, fairly sizable chunks. Not a fine dice, but like a true chop, so that there's more more heft to the pepper pieces. And again, I'm going kind of for more a more rustic feel today. I'm just gonna prep everything, I think. Got plenty of time to do that. These are two tomatoes. You can core a tomato to your preference. I know some people who don't core them at all. And we'll chop those up too. A bigger chop than I typically would, because I think it'll be fine. Here I have um, seven cloves of garlic. Eight cloves, no, seven. I peeled it off camera. Ooh, gotcha. And you can chop this however you like. How are you chopping it? Uh, in the rustic style. I feel happy when I get a big chunk of garlic and a, a food item. Iggy, stop your whining. And I think that's where we'll stop chopping for now. So, our two Big flavor ingredients today will be Hungarian paprika. It is authentic. And then I will be using caraway seeds today. So the caraway seeds, we got that rye bread flavor. You can toast them if you want. I ain't got time for that. So that's one and a half tablespoons, and it's like the only thing in the recipe that I'm loosely following that I really need to make sure I got that number right. <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> okay. And so my memory was very wrong. <laughs> Let me just put all of that back in there. Uh, I needed a half teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just eyeball that. That's probably even more than, than what I called for, but it's fine. And again, you can toast it if you want. I don't think it's gonna matter too much today, but I'm gonna go ahead and grind it up into a powder. If you got powdered caraway, that's fine too. Okay, I'll just set that to the side for now. So, when it's a lot of onions, this step taste takes a while, also tastes a while. We're just trying to brown them up a bit before we move on. Be back soon. Okay, I'm feeling impatient. So the onions are like, they just started to be done. I can't wait no longer. So I got some stew meat. This is from the farm, Whip Farm, very family farm. So this is just uh, cubed beef, miscellaneous. And again, if you wanted to be sweaty, you could perfectly brown it. I don't think that's gonna matter for us today. And why is that? Because I get to decide what matters to, to us today. This is one of my uh, very impatient strategies. I'll just push the vegetables to one side, put the meat on the other. And while we're at it, we'll give it some salt. Maybe a little more salt. Let that brown for a couple minutes. And then we'll be back. Okay, my beef is browned a bit. It is our tomato and pepper. And I will comment that again, we're getting to the point here where the pot is very full. I also think Pretty important at this stage, if you have stuff sticking to the pot on the bottom, the juice from the tomato should be acidic enough for you to be able to scrape it pretty decently. And of course, you wanna scrape that, those, uh, those bits for the flavor of the food. Go ahead and put your garlic in. Cause we're not really gonna be sauteing, you know? It, it's really gonna be kinda cooked in the juices of the vegetables. And we're basically just gonna saute all of this up for a few minutes until I start to see kinda some wilting of the vegetables, which are starting to break down, and maybe a little bit of brown in some of them. And then we'll be almost ready to get the actual stewing part. Okay. Uh, so last things we gotta add. I'm gonna do things a little out of order. So your your mileage may vary a bit. But also, look at all the liquid. We've put no liquid in this so far and it's already you know, sitting in its own liquid, which is great. We're releasing the flavors. So, apparently, traditionally, you just use water and not stock. Today, if I have the beef shits, we'll use them. Looks like I do not have the beef shits. But I do have the vegetable shits. Honestly, this is, I mean, it's just my small brain take. But I think that buying pre-made stock is mostly a waste of money. Unless you have the hookups to some like really good shit. But that boxed shit on the shelf, what the f is the point? Just buy it concentrated and add your own water at home. And we're gonna add some water for that other half of the stock. And I'm not saying any of that to disparage stock itself. I love stock, I love broth, I make it all the time. But in this context where we just like freshly chopped and cooked down vegetables and, and meat, I really don't think you're gonna notice the flavor of pre-made broth. About five cups of water. And it'll take a little bit for our paste to dissolve in there. Kind of thinking we probably will need more liquid at some point, but I'm just gonna let it ride for now. And now I will add first my caraway. And we'll pop that in. And we need the paprika. You wanna be really careful with the paprika and that's why I'm adding it with the actual liquid because you can scorch it if it's exposed to direct heat. And we're supposed to use a quarter cup, which in my case is approximately the rest. I'm grabbing a whisk just to see if I can't mix that in a little easier. Smells great. Okay, and then we're gonna add a, a bay leaf or two. Uh, a little bit of seasoning up front, with some salt, pepper, and this we are gonna bring to a simmer. And we're gonna let it cook down by at least 30 minutes at first, and then we'll add some additional vegetables, being potatoes and carrots. Let it stew even longer. Give that a quick initial taste. It's really good. Uh, it's really good. The caraway paprika combo, it's really good. I'm really happy with where this is headed. So. We'll, uh, we'll update you. I'm going to simmer this uncovered, I think, and we'll be back. All right, our vegetals have been stewing for an amount of time, indeterminate, indeterminate and undeterminable. 
There they are, bubbling away. But now we're gonna add our potatoes and carrots. Now the potatoes and carrots, 100% optional, in that you don't have to add them. I guess all ingredients are optional, but certainly this is kind of a way of filling out the nutrition profile of this, makes it more hearty. If you could eat more vegetables of any kind, it's probably good for you. So I'm peeling the carrots. And I'm gonna peel the potato. Two potatoes, two carrots. And we're gonna chop them up as well into bite-sized pieces. Okay, I think, I think I'll do my, the, the diagonal rotation, kind of like uh, as if we were making Japanese curry or something, because I like these asymmetrical free-form carrot pieces. I think that's fun. But of course you could chop it how you like it. And our potato, we'll just do some chunks, and in all of these will go. You could, of course, add these earlier if you're feeling lazy, for example, but you know, the longer that you cook those specific vegetables, they will get soft to the point that they'll become mushy. And of course, that's not our preferred texture. And while we're at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more liquid. Another two cups of water. I'm gonna get this back up to heat. And then it's just a matter of stewing this until we're happy with the consistency. I'll give you an update soon. Maybe I should, maybe I should taste it. Taste what we got. I like that it tastes like paprikash, because I like paprikash. <laughs> Alright, Zizu. Alright, here's our goulash. And I am contractually obligated per my contract with myself to make the pun. If you have multiple uh, pots of goulash, is it goulashes? <laughs> So here's how I'm uh, telling if it's done. I'm taking a spoon. I'm poking a potato to see if it's cooked. It is. I'm poking a carrot. It's cooked. And also the beef is tender. So let's serve it up. And I will try it without sour cream, followed by with sour cream for a depth of goulash's flavor. Okay, here I am poking around in here. We got the peppers. We got potato. We got the beef. Let's try the broth. Oh, it's fabulous. I really, that, I mean, we used a preposterous amount of paprika and that is what it tastes like, but it's gotta taste like that, you know? And as for me in my house, I'm putting the goddamn sour cream on it for sure. And it'll be great that way, I don't even have to try it. Now, I wanna finish this with a comment, is that I got some bread that is mostly stale. Mostly stale bread. This is the application for mostly stale bread. You got a hunk of bread like that, you stick it in there, it'll soak up the goodness, and it's good as new. Boom, fantastic. Okay, that's the show today. Yeah, there's, there's nothing more to say. It tastes like a paprika beef stew. That's what it tastes like. That's how you do it. Eat the goulash. It's good for you, I think. We'll see you next time on PGC and if you want to protect your shoes, buy some galashes. Okay, goodbye.